A warm greetings to you from the Southern Counties staff team and I do hope that you have got some good things that are coming your way in the summer and also that you receive the wisdom and the discernment that you need together with your fellow leaders and church as you work out how best to come back to gathering and to serving together now that we can do that face to face. We would value your prayers for us as well as a staff team and as trustees as we try to discern the way forward. We're doing a review at the moment of everything that the association is involved in and our priorities and that's properly deeply affected by the fact that two staff members are moving on. Dave Llewellyn is moving on to be the lead pastor at Penarth Tabernacle in South Wales. Alison Merrill who's been doing leadership and admin work for us She's moving to take up a, another part-time role in working with people with learning disabilities. Both of them have served us magnificently well. We'll miss them, but it raises uh, questions about how we're going to configure for the future. And it's that sense of how we regard each other, how we work with each other, that I want to stay with today. And rather unsurprisingly I want to do part two of reflecting from a paddleboarder's perspective. Some of you may realise that my wife and I have been having a go at paddleboarding, we've been at all ten times now, and uh, one of the things that uh, has changed is the way that we regard boats around us on the river or on the uh, estuary or on the harbour at Christchurch. Previously, we it would be something to enjoy, to see people enjoying the different sorts of boats that are out and just to sort of watch and uh, um, uh, see how they, how they do it and how they go. It's now become a threat because if you're paddleboarding and a motorised boat particularly goes past you at any speed, it generates waves, which means that your paddleboard is going to be destabilised. You have to try and head into the waves using the rocker front of the board, but it will definitely be a challenge. It's even more of a challenge if actually you can see that the boat that's being uh, steered has been rented by people that know nothing about boating and about water and about paddle boards because they're unlikely to give you the amount of space that you'd prefer or slow down. That means that those people that do understand the need to uh, be respectful and to slow down are particularly honoured and uh, we're particularly grateful for those that actually do do that at this time. And uh, it reminds me so much of church and of society in recent months. Where once one would hope that there's a basic level of trust, we've got used to regarding other people as a threat, as someone who could pass on uh, a deadly virus as people who ought to know better about how close they're coming to, to us and all of those things that we felt over the time. And what that does is it's undermined our sense of simply being free to be around one another in a significant way. The sheer stress of this time has also meant that many of us have become very anxious, uh, frankly brittle and tetchy. And it means that also we... Uh, do the thing that human beings always do, which is we're looking for someone else to actually pin the blame on about things that actually aren't suiting us or aren't our agenda. Of course, that's not just about these times. It's not just about modern times. Right back in Philippians, the Apostle Paul appeals that Euodia and Syntyche might be able to have one mind in the Lord and, uh, and, and agree and that a significant person from Paul's perspective might actually be part of helping that uh, working together and agreeing together happen. There's something really, really important about where and how peace works biblically. And in this chapter in Philippians 4, there are three references really to where peace comes from. One of them is where we realise that we're co-workers and we're partners with one another and, of course, with Christ in wanting to live out this new community centred on Jesus himself, centred on wanting to make Jesus known. 
So rather than regarding one another as a threat or competing with one another or wanting to get our way, we're wanting to get and see Christ's way. And then there's another aspect of peaceable living here, which is to do with knowing that the centre of our peace is going to be putting our hope and our trust in the Lord himself. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord's near. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Something about as we gather together, don't forget this is said to a group of people, not to an individual. As we gather together, one of the things we're invited to do is once more discover what does it mean to actually uh, come before Jesus and worship and discern again what he's like and what his ways are for the world and for us, centering on him. And then just when you uh, thought that actually the Apostle Paul has stopped talking about peaceable living and receiving the peace, the shalom of God, he then comes to it again, and this time he says, uh, look around you at anything and everything which is honourable and pure and just and pleasing and commendable and excellent and worthy of praise and honour, and think about these things. So the Apostle Paul says that there's something of peace that comes when we actually look and live in harmony with that around us, which is good and God-given. And actually, when he lists all those virtues and all those things that are worth thinking about, he's actually doing what uh, people in Philippi would be very familiar with, because actually it was something that the Greeks did. They selected things that were worth thinking about and then said, concentrate on those things, make them a priority. And then only Paul could do this, probably, and get away with it. And then he says, and... Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. He almost implies that some of those things have been lived out in him and we're, we're invited, they were invited in Philippi to replicate that. And the God of peace will be with you. So there's something about living in harmony with the way that God intends leads itself to peace, even if so much else around us makes us understandably anxious and unsettled and indeed brittle. So there's something offered here about how we live and work with one another. And I commend this way of living and being with one another to you. It's all too easy and in my role I get to see some of the worst and most difficult instances of this. To want to blame others, to fall out with one another, to think that the responsibility for going forward in our church or in our group is all on someone else. And if they don't get it right, to be complaining or to be critical or worse. And that's not at the heart of what it means to partner with Christ and to partner with one another. Things are challenging enough without us inventing more challenges and more difficulties to cope with. So the prayer is this, and the invitation is this. Instead of seeing other people, as uh, Alice and I do when we're paddleboarding, seeing other people coming towards us or around us as a threat, as people to be already critical of before they've even come near, what about if we saw other people as a gift from God who may be different to us, who we're going to have to frankly do some adjusting around and they around us as well. But people that actually are also made the, in the image of God, people who also can be right at the heart of helping Jesus to be discovered, particularly as we learn to work with one another and promote the interests of one another and to love one another. So a simple thought, it started with paddle boarding, but I pray and hope that it's deeply rooted in the gospel and who Jesus is 
and who he calls us to be with one another. May God bless you as you put all this into practice and may God help me to do the same.